a reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Ask now of the days of old, before your time, ever since God created man upon the earth. Ask from one end of the sky to the other, did anything so great ever happen before? Was it ever heard of? Did a people ever hear the voice of God speaking from the midst of fire as you did and live? Or did any God venture to go and take a nation for himself from the midst of another nation by testings, by signs and wonders, by war, with strong hand and outstretched arm and by great terrors, all of which the Lord, your God, did for you in Egypt before your eyes. This is what you must know in fixing your heart that the Lord is God in the heavens above and on earth below and that there is no other. You must keep his statutes and commandments that I enjoin on you today that you and your children after may prosper and that you may have long life on the land which the Lord your God is giving you forever. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, for those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you received a spirit of adoption through whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if only we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had ordered them. When they all saw him, they worshipped, but they doubted. Then Jesus approached and said to them, all power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we celebrate the Solemnity of the Most Holy Trinity. The Solemnity of the Most Holy Trinity comes right after we've celebrated Pentecost. Kind of a culmination of what we've celebrated in our calendar year. God revealing himself to us. He reveals himself to us in the Old Testament in many ways as the Creator. And yet, we have a greater revealing of him in his Son, the second person Trinity, Jesus Christ. Then, when Jesus Christ ascends back into heaven, he sends the Holy Spirit. And only then do we really kind of get it to all come together, that God is a Trinity. Three persons, one God. Three persons, one being. And when God reveals this to us, he's not just simply revealing something about himself. He's revealing his core to us, who he is in his innermost being. It's not just who he is in relation to us. It's who God always has been. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There's a lot of analogies used for this. If you want some humor, Google 
um, St. Patrick's Bad Analogies. It's actually by a Lutheran satire group, but it's hilarious. There's a lot of different analogies, and every analogy breaks down at a certain point. But one of the things that I love is the analogy of the Trinity wrapped up in love. Because we hear elsewhere in Scripture, God is love. Not just that God is loving, not just that God loves, God is love. In who he is, he is love. Well, what does that look like before there was anything but God? It meant the Father was always the lover. You cannot have love without one who loves, the lover. And you can't have love without one who is loved, the Son, the beloved Son, the beloved. For all eternity, Father and Son existed out there as the lover and the beloved. And you cannot have a lover and a beloved without the spirit of love that exists between the two of them. This is part of understanding the Trinity. You cannot have a beloved or the love without a lover that is the origin of it all. You cannot have a lover unless there is one whom they are loving and the love that is being extended out between them. You cannot have love between two persons unless there's two other persons to have that love between. You cannot pull it apart. They're distinct, but they are not separable. This is who God is and has always been even before he created us, even before he created the world. When he revealed the Trinity to us, he was revealing who he is at his inmost being. Now, if I've bored you with academia, let's talk about something a little bit deeper. This command of Christ, I've got the first part of it up there in three languages, go therefore and make disciples of all nations. But the next part of it has an interesting aspect if you know the original languages. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Just recently I had somebody asking me, Father, why do, we, why do we Catholics always make the sign of the cross when we're praying? I know we do it. We do it with, without even thinking about it. Sometimes we pass a water fountain in, in a mall and we dip our fingers and make the sign of the cross just out of habit. Why do we do this? Well, first off, we use holy water to remind us of the waters of our baptism. And we were baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. But if you go back to the original language and culture, this is so much richer than you realize. First off, the word in in English can mean two things. We're in the church right now, the church building. But you can also go in the church which means you're going into the church. The Greek of this is more like that in. Baptizing them into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. That sounds a little bit more interesting, but still, Father, I don't know what you're talking about. When you understand Jewish culture, name is not just a name. In our, in, in our Anglo culture, a name is a sound, a set of syllables that you respond to. In fact, I still respond to nicknames I had years ago in scout camp. Unfortunately, I had, was at somebody's house and their dog had the same name and they kept yelling the dog's name and my head was about to whip around. A name is just a sound to us. But in Jewish culture, name was identity who you are. We talk about Jesus and his name being holy. It isn't the sound Jesus because he would have responded to Yeshua. It's the meaning of the name. God who saves, Yahweh saves. We call him Emmanuel. His name is Emmanuel. It didn't say that they named him Emmanuel. The Bible's wrong. No, 
His identity was God with us, Emmanuel. So what have we, bapti what have we been baptized into? Baptized, baptizing them into the identity of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. By your baptism, you've been brought into that identity of love. God's eternal love for the Son and the, and the mutual love of the Son to the Father. That intimate love that has always existed, you were brought into at your baptism. And when we make the sign of the cross in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, we're offering our prayer as we enter in, into the identity of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, we offer our prayers. And we conclude our prayers having offered them up into that identity, that highest height of heaven. Each thing we do as Catholics, as Christians, should be grounded in this. The Trinity is the central mystery of our faith, that God is three persons. God is love, and he calls us into that love. Will you let it guide your life? Will you start your day saying, I'm going to live this day with each step walking deeper into the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit? Will I walk deeper into their identity? Will I understand them better at the end of this day than I did the day before? Will I live more like them today than I did yesterday? The challenge of our baptism is to live this. To live the love of the Trinity. To be invited into that in a moment of quiet at the start of our day. And let it shape every word we speak every action we do, every thought we choose. God is three persons. God is love. He invites us into that community. He invites us into that love. How will we respond with each moment of our lives?